Namaste everyone. Uh, welcome again to the evening session. Uh, today is day one of the three-day global symposium on cow-centric sustainability. So for today's evening session, we have two very interesting topics that will be touched upon. One is biogas for rural India, where uh, Ramakrishnan ji, the director of Vivekananda Kendra's uh, NARDEP, which is Natural Resource Development Project, uh, they've been working for over uh, many decades in this area and have implemented thousands of uh, low-cost biogas models across um, Kanyakumari and other uh, South Indian districts. Uh, he will be sharing his uh, work with us. And we also have a researcher joining us from California, Will Bax, who will be talking about how uh, you know, cow manure helps sequester carbon. So this is sort of a game-changing um, aspect which we found as well, uh, where we'll be exploring the potential of cow dung uh, as a climate change mitigation tool uh, in contrast to the normal narrative of cows uh, in emitting methane. So this will also give a very interesting uh, alternative framework to look at it. So uh, these two will be the... Uh, sessions uh, today evening. Uh, before beginning today's session, let me take a moment to introduce uh, our uh, uh, speaker, uh, Ramakrishnan ji to all of you. Uh, I've had the good fortune of knowing Ramakrishnan ji for the past uh, three uh, years, uh, where we, from our organization, Anadi Crest, we were very interested in uh, exploring uh, vernacular architecture and sustainable construction. So the first uh, people we came across or went and learned it from was uh, in Kanyakumari, where we had taken around uh, 20 to 25 civil engineering students uh, to go and learn hands-on from them about, uh, um, you know, uh, low-cost, eco-friendly building technologies. So to introduce Ramakrishnan ji, he is currently the director of Vivekananda Kendra Narda. Uh, he's in charge of the re research activities of the Technology Resource Center in the field of renewable energy, eco-friendly construction technology, and water management. He's been involved in several community-based renovation uh, projects, especially of local water tanks uh, in the Kanyakumari district. And uh, he is also one of the main people behind developing the Shakti Surabhi biomethanation plant uh, for organic waste. And uh, this uh, uh, project has been uh, uh, you know, commissioned for over 3,000 biogas plants in multiple villages across South India. He is also a principal investigator for uh, Departments of Science and Technology Core Support, Support Government of India and a member of the Mentoring and Monitoring Committee for Stride Central University of Tamil Nadu in Tiruvaru. Uh, other than that, he has also uh, published a lot of books, uh, especially on biomethanation, handbook on rainwater harvesting, uh, ferro-cement technology, bioenergy from biomass, and wormy-wash technology. So a very hands-on uh, person. Uh, it's always... Um, a pleasure for us and all the students we go with to interact with uh, Ramakrishnan ji. And we're very, very happy to uh, have you on board, Ramakrishnan ji. Uh, over to you. Thank you, Pien. Pienya. I will share my uh, screen. Uh, is it visible? Pranya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, namaskar to everybody. Actually, Pranya sister introduced me very nicely. Uh, so, actually, uh, just I want to tell you about uh, my organization, Vivekananda Kendra. So, all of you know about Vivekananda Rock Memorial. So, uh, we are blogging from that uh, organization. Uh, Vivekananda Kendra is a spiritually oriented service organization. He is having more than uh, 1,000 branch centers in all over India. Our activities are uh, mainly on education, uh, rural development activities, yoga, publication, and uh, sustainable development. Just I will uh, rush through it, everything. Uh, we are uh, working in the field of Medical Research Foundation. We have many wings in Vivekananda Kendra, Human Excellence Center, and the VK IKM is based at uh, uh, Bhuneshwar. And Vedic Vision Foundation at based at Kodungulur, Vivekananda Kendra International based at Delhi, Vivekananda Kendra Institute of Culture is based at Guwahati, Arun Jodi Project, we have uh, at Arunachal Pradesh, and rural development activities many places in, Arna, in Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Tamil Nadu, and Orissa. Many places we are doing it, and we, we are doing it Vivekananda Kendra Seva Prakal also. This is the one of the field, Vivekananda uh, Kendra NARDAP. NARDAP means Natural Resource Development Project. 
here we work for eco friendly construction technology already pranya uh, told to you uh, we have more than 30 35 technologies and we are working for water management so we are renovating many temple tanks we are doing uh, i think uh, first time in tamil nadu we have only done it rain water harvesting and roof water harvesting mainly roof water harvesting in 1992 at uh, mudugulathur area and uh, we have renovated uh, uh, in rameshwaram many uh, water bodies and uh, we are working in organic farming also we have many technologies fish amino azola like that we can uh, name it anything we are having technology we are giving tele program to others also and uh, we are working for health uh, uh, siddha medicine uh, so we have varma research and research center also so we are uh, having network of uh, traditional vaidyas and uh, uh, siddha doctors and uh, we are working in energy field so i am going to talk about energy field that's only i am not uh, telling about the details and we are working for inner sustainability also actually uh, we give awareness program we motivating the people to uh, do this uh, sustainability we are doing it this is the one of the uh, recent project uh, 10 years back we started giriramesham project actually this is holistic approach to develop the uh, village or town so here we are develop we are making a model of uh, rameshwaram it is green rameshwaram here we work for nine vertical field uh, one is uh, solid waste management water management uh, grey water treatment uh, and uh, um, renewable energy and archaeology so all this is mixing together uh, nine vertical we are doing it whenever we talk about uh, development so many people talk about uh, road bridge uh, everything is based on concrete Uh, against the uh, environment but here uh, the development we talk about based on sustainable development so this is a model project we want to show to the world how that uh, city to be developed like that so this is project is going on so this is the biogas plant actually uh, whenever we uh, we started this department 1986 is first project is the biogas plant only so here this is the biogas plant you are seeing it so this is the generally i want to tell about the biogas plant so biogas plant means a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide this is the biogas so methane will be there and the carbon dioxide also will be there methane will be 55 to 65 percentage uh, and carbon dioxide will be to uh, 35 percentage about 35 percentage there is a traces gases also will be there hydrogen sulfide gas and other traces gases also will be there and uh, so whenever uh, uh, how it produces biogas suppose we put cow dung with water in anaerobic condition so automatically this gas will produce so this is a microbial reaction so once if we put cow dung with water automatically that anaerobic uh, anaerobic condition it anaerobic bacteria develops so once it anaerobic bacteria develops there will be a uh, hydrology stage and astonic stage and methanogenic stage so this is the stage wise based on the stage wise we will get the biogas so this is the uh, uh, how it produces so these are the component so whenever we go we are talking about biogas plant this component must be there so one is mixing the another one is inlet pipe digester gas holder outlet pipe outlet tank and gas pipeline and valves and fitting actually mixing tank means mixing the cow dung with the water that is a mixing tank inlet pipe means whatever is mixing the cow dung with the water slurry it has to pass through inlet pipe it goes to the digester so the digester is a, uh, another uh, uh, thing we can call is reactor so the digester it, it digests the uh, cow dung and with the water and uh, reaction will take place and the gas holder is uh, storing the gas in the holder and the outlet pipe is uh, the whatever after completing the process so whatever the slurry comes the manure comes through the pipe uh, and it goes to the outlet tank so this will come automatic process only and this is the another one is the last one is the gas pipeline this gas pipeline in this we have to take the gas into the uh, stove or any other purpose and these are the uh, biogas plant this two types of biogas plant so one is arrangement of gas holder and method of feeding so the arrangement of gas holder we say uh, floating dung uh, gas holder fixed dung gas holder and method of feeding so daily feeding will be there uh, weekly feeding will be there monthly feeding will be there so based on that feeding also we have uh, we can categorize it in two types so this is the kvic model uh, you can see it you are uh, you are getting it na sister correctly just uh, want to know it so that uh, uh, presentation is visible na kvic model by gas one and visible yes, na yes yes uh, all okay. are visible okay, thank you 
So we have constructed more than a thousand biogas plant in all over India, KVC model. And uh, many times uh, this KVC model, how it works on this is the mixing tank is there. You have to mix the cow dung with the water. There is a well type of structure. KVC model is a well type of structure. There is a partition wall will be there. And uh, we, when you put the gas holder automatically, the anaerobic condition develops and it produces the gas. So once they produce the gas, automatically the gas goes up, the gas holder will go up. Then uh, based on this uh, partition will be there, the first day waste will come down, uh, cow dung study will come down, slowly it will go up. So after 30 days, 40 days, this whatever you put first day uh, slurry, cow dung uh, slurry, so automatically it will come out from through outlet tank. So this is the procedure. And this is the early at the KVC model, they put MS uh, uh, gas holder. So MS means automatically in the gas, there will be a, a sulfur content will be there. It corrode the, uh, uh, this um, uh, holder. So what will happen after some time, you know, there will be a hole will be there. So people will not, uh, afterwards they will not uh, bother about this one. Then the plant will become defunct after some time. So what we did, we did changed it afterward. That is the model, another one is the Janava model. So we, we changed the model. Uh, so we converted the modified the model. Uh, KVC model to uh, Janada model. This is the Janada model. This is a dome type of structure. There is no need of uh, uh, this MS type of gas holder in that one. So this is the Janada model. The third one is the Dinapadi model. This is the construction procedure we have given. We have constructed more than uh, 3000 biogas plant in all over India. So we have constructed with KVC model also. This is uh, Dinapadi model also we constructed. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the procedure, how to uh, select the area. So we have given uh, first, uh, we should not be near uh, roots uh, planting uh, near, near plants, we should not keep it about 10 meter distance. You have to keep it. So, how to uh, dig the uh, uh, earth and we have to give the curvature. And afterwards, curvature, you have to put concrete and uh, we have to uh, keep your own pillar. And uh, there is the uh, measurement rod, is that is the uh, whatever that one man hold is holding is now that is the measurement rod. So, based on that, it will be horizontally and vertically the same measurement will be followed and will be constructed. This is, you can see it um, stage wise. Then finally, uh, the dome, there is no need of uh, support. So what we do, we will put hook in that one. So this is a brick type of structure is there. So we, uh, brick, we will put a rod in that one, automatically will hook the, uh, um, this brick. So automatically will not fall down. So like that only we will construct the plan. And finally, we have to plaster it two side. So, the, uh, because we have to plaster it, so the leakage will be there, the gas leakage will be there. So, avoiding the gas leakage, we have to plaster it inside also and outside, outside also. So, both sides, we, we have to plaster it. This is the working method. Uh, uh, this is very tricky uh, uh, construction. Actually, uh, who sir wants to construct this type of plant, that method to be trained minimum three months time. Uh, without training, if you construct the plant, then he will make a failure uh, in that model. So many places, uh, uh, the technology is successful. Uh, the failure will happen based on manually. So if he, do, if he not, doesn't do proper work, these failures will happen. And the, you have to check up the soil, clay soil or uh, sandy soil, you have to check up. So based on that only you have to go the plant. So this is the uh, structure. This is a uh, one cubic meter capacity. So one cubic meter equal to 0 0.43 kg of LPG, almost 430 gram LPG, uh, 430 gram of LPG. So if you consider one cubic meter plant, 430 gram of LPG is required, 25 kg uh, cow dung if you have to put it. So 25 kg means cow dung will give 10 kg per day, uh, one cow. Suppose uh, if you go for 25 kg means you have to have minimum two cow, one calf. So uh, if who's are having two cow, they can go for one commuter plant. So if they, uh, you have to multiply it, suppose uh, any goshal, uh, if you have 10 cows, you have to multiply it. 10 cow means 10 into 10 kg, you will, you will get uh, 100 kg. You can go for four commuter plant. Suppose if you go for, if you have buffalo, uh, buffalo will give 15 kg uh, cow dung per day. So you have to calculate based on that. And another one, uh, that, uh, that cow goes for grazing, so you have to change the design also. If you go for grazing, you will get seven kg only per, per day. So based on that, you have to uh, you have to calculate and design the plant. So these are the uh, thumb rules. And uh, this is the method. Uh, we are given how many how many bricks is required. Uh, this is the uh, design we are given. 
measurements all this we are given we have a booklet in that we are given so another one model we developed a wind cap model so vivekananda kendra and we have uh, got one from kapat new delhi so earlier very old 20 years back 22 years back story this is so we have uh, developed this model and uh, we constructed 100 plants in all over india this is wherever bamboo is cheaper so we can go for this type of model this is instead of dina dina model we are constructing with the brick instead of brick we can go for this type of uh, bamboo reaper for uh, bamboo reaper for making this type of dome and plastering it inside and outside this is a very simple method uh, and another one we went for ferrosement technology actually we are good for good in uh, uh, mud block technology uh, compressor the block and uh, ferrosement technology and ferrosement door and windows everything and we used to give training also so here uh, two method we are following it one is uh, mold method without mold so we can make it both way and we have to plaster it to two sides this is a ex, uh, this is a hexagonal chicken mesh, uh, chicken mess and uh, we used to give training to the uh, whosoever are constructing the biogas plant the ngos uh, and uh, in, uh, individuals so for them we are giving the training program uh, uh, in many areas this is the toilet liquid biogas plant actually we are given vision action the vision is action means so we have whatever thing we achieved we have uh, given here this is the uh, uh, toilet linked biogas plant actually whenever you go for a toilet you will go for uh, septic tank leach pit or uh, any other model you will go actually uh, here if you connect with biogas plant there is no need of septic tank leach pit Actually, this is a very good method. This is the best solution for a solid waste management, best solution for toilet waste management also. Because uh, once if it goes this process, whatever slurry comes outside, there will not be any smell and uh, uh, flies and mosquitoes. And uh, in the process that uh, whatever uh, this excreta will become a good manure. And, um, and there will not be, uh, you can touch it, uh, uh, this, whatever slurry comes out, we can touch it also. In that process, we can save a lot of money because the money goes, uh, mainly money goes for constructing the safety tank. So this is the arrangement, you can see it. So whenever the toilet comes in, there is the inspection chamber. The inspection chamber means we can divert the waste. Uh, so this is inspection chamber. Then from there, you can connect it to the, uh, this uh, biogas plant. Another one inlet tank is that, that inlet tank means uh, mixing cow dung with the water. That is the cow dung based biogas plant. Uh, we are connecting with uh, toilet linked biogas plant. So this is a very simple method. For this purpose also, the government is giving the subsidy uh, to the uh, uh, beneficiaries. So this is the, uh, mainly we, I want to say about, uh, this, many will feel this is a biogas plant, but this is not a biogas plant. This is a biomanure plant. So we have to change the, uh, name as a biomanure plant only. So the future thing I'm going to talk about more on biomanure only. Here, uh, when you see the fresh cow dung, uh, you can see it nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, and then, and you can see the biogas manure. After after the process, whatever slurry comes now, what is the percentage you can see it. So when you see it, na, then this percentage is goes five times in nitrogen. Uh, other thing is uh, ten times it goes. So you can uh, um, identify. This, this is very good manure. And another part, we are not bothering, we are not calculating about microbes part. Okay, we will get very good microbes. You can see as you can use as a EM solution also. So this is the difference between uh, uh, biogas manure and urea and the composite technique too and the biogas manure technique. So you can see the uh, difference. Uh, here, uh, composting it takes more time, but biogas uh, uh, plant is takes very, uh, uh, less time. This is the very fastest method of treating the waste. So here, this is the best solution in the world. So we have uh, done it based on that. Actually, whenever you go for vermicomposting, you will go for uh, cow dung. Instead of cow dung, if you go for uh, biogas slurry, you will uh, you will get very good uh, very good quality of uh, vermicomposting, and the worms also will be very healthy. Uh, worms will get it. So quality of uh, 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 vermicomposting will be very good. So this also we are doing it. And uh, uh, Panjakavya. So if in, instead of uh, cow dung, if you go for uh, this slurry, this value of uh, Panjakavya will increase it. 
and uh, uh, final one is this is azola this is azola uh, many will talk about azola many got phd also many phd will find out in all over the india but kendra has done it uh, the sheet method developed the sheet method and we have given more than 5 lakh farmers all over india so always we are mass only to give the technology so we have got mainly in uh, kerala the sheet method developed by kendra only always azola is available everywhere in the uh, tank water tank everywhere but the sheet method uh, uh, developed and uh, given to many uh, farmers so this uh, this azola is uh, is new uh, more protein content if we give to the cow cow will give uh, 10 percentage uh, more milk and the density of the milk also will, uh, increasing it if you give to the uh, hen uh, that yellow portion increases and we have given to one uh, kasi seva samiti so they have taken up, up our technology by azola technology they they are uh, uh, they are doing it they are for a day they are manufacturing uh, three ton of azola and then making it a pellet and they are telling uh, after putting the azola we will get two yellow uh, 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 portion so like that it increases and we, we give to the uh, goat pig everything so it will, the protein content increase the healthy the that that animals will be healthy so based on that we have done the uh, r and d work uh, so we have uh, got uh, iron award in the year of 2000 uh six then afterwards only that ammonia has changed the name is biogas to biomania plant so we have uh, our secretary has uh, uh, that uh, pressed the government so after they changed the biogas to biomania plant nowadays biogas manure plant the change the name is biogas career plant and this is a method whenever we talk about organic farming we say the, uh, the method of uh, doing it the right side you can see the slide Uh, uh, that panel and another one uh, this is main thing uh, repairing and uh, maintenance of biogas plant actually uh, many places uh, plants uh, once it gets failure they will leave it uh, and uh, afterwards it will become defunct only so what we did after received the, the, the award we have fund then that fund we have, uh, we thought of renovating uh, uh, rectifying the Uh, defective plants so we we rectified many plants and we brought out the book also so you can see that uh, our book repair and maintenance of biogas plant so how to maintain the biogas plant and how to rectify the mistake and uh, we have many uh, we got many experience so one time there is a one organization uh, from karnataka they came here for training so they are uh, they have more than 50 supervisor and per year they are constructing thousands of uh, 10000 biogas plants they came here for training once they uh, once they are, we felt we are small but they are big they are constructing so many plants we are not constructing much plant but we are good in uh, technology part once we give the training program automatically when uh, we understood whatever we tell them they are converting into the inch uh, suppose at 10 mm if we say now they convert into the half inch so afterwards we understood they are not doing the um, uh, they are not uh, converting everything into the uh, inch so what we felt uh, uh, so once if we convert everything even the size will changes the volume will changes so because of that failure also is happening then we told whatever you put it in mm you have to follow properly in centimeter or mm so you should not change it into inch like that we told and we have whatever cracks happen how to repair it and all we have given to the training program uh, we have given now also we are give, rectifying the Uh, the uh, defective plant recently we rectified one bark the bark uh, model of biogas plant at Kal- kalpakam so there are also uh, defunct plant about uh, 40 cubic meter plant so our worker supervisor went and rectified the plant this is the uh, our uh, our model of pakti survey biogas plant this is up to uh, till i talked about cow dung based biogas plant now i am going to talk about the kitchen waste based biogas plant actually this is the kitchen waste biogas plant this is smaller in size and the cow dung based plant is bigger in size and uh, this why big, the cow dung based plant is bigger in size the kitchen waste plant is smaller in size actually this is everything is based on energy uh, so the cow dung means a cow already taken the energy dung is not much energy and in case of kitchen waste whatever we have to uh, when you uh, consume so that much energy we have to get it so all the energy is remaining that energy is converting into a gas so here 
uh, if you put less amount of waste, you will get one cubic meter of gas. Suppose if five kg of waste, if you put it, you will get one cubic meter of gas. But in case of kitchen uh, cow dung waste plant, you have to put twenty five kg of uh, cow dung. Then only you will get one cubic meter of gas. But here you will put one kg of waste, you will get one cubic meter of gas. Actually, here we say this is a five in one solution. One is we are disposing the waste, so you will not uh, there is there will not be any place in the mosquitoes in your home. Second, you will get the gas. Third will be uh, you will get very good organic manure, very liquid manure. You will get it. Fourth one is you can save the money. Fifth one is uh, this is greenhouse gases. You are arresting the greenhouse gases and uh, this is uh, gases and uh, direct you are indirectly you are uh, helping the nature. And uh, in that way, suppose if you are calculating uh, methane content, so the methane is twenty three times dangerous than carbon dioxide. So if you carbon dioxide also dangerous gas, so compared to carbon dioxide, uh, the methane is twenty three times more than. Uh, that and other one, whatever material you are throwing the waste. Suppose whatever waste is in your home, you are throwing the waste. So automatically methane is produces and it is spoil the our environment. So this is uh, whosoever uh, environment list. Suppose you are you are uh, loving the nature. So whosoever is having, they have to have this type of plant in your home. And whatever gas out uh, coming outside, what will you use it? You will use it for generator purpose and the CNG purpose. So this is the uh, plan. How to install it? We are given. So we have to remove it. There is a uh, parcel be there. You have to put it outlet tank, and uh, you have to put mixing with the cow dung with the water. So actually, any plan you have to go for cow dung only. So without cow dung, you can't do anything. Actually, for solid waste management, this biomethanation is the best solution. We told. So everything is based on microbes only. This is cow dung bacteria only. My cow dung microbes only. So our uh, always our secretary used to say whenever we talk about uh, uh, there was there was where we will stay in uh, cow. So our our, uh, our secretary always jokingly says cows uh, it is it say it uh, there was staying in cow dung only because lot of bacteria all the bacteria is good for uh, uh, environment. So this is the uh, procedure and uh, we. Uh, we have to put the cow dung uh, with water. We have to remove the um, uh, this um, um, fiber portion. So this is the method. Uh, this is water jacket model. You have to put the water inside, and we have to fill it with uh, this gas holder. So this is the procedure is there. Actually, here this plant uh, there will not be any, uh, will not give any smell because of water jacket. Uh, you will not see anything uh, uh, in the eye. So uh, when other people say it, it will look uh, good. In case of uh, KVC model and all, whenever you go near the plant, automatically the smell will come. But here you will not find any smell because of water jacket. This is the method. This is the stove also. That the stove is a different stove, uh, like uh, not like uh, LPG stove. LPG is calorific value is high. Uh, mm -hmm. Because of that, we will go for smaller burner hole. Here this calorific value is very less. So because of that, we have to go for bigger uh, burner holder. You can bigger holes will be there. You can see it. Uh, this is the method. This is the funnel arrangement will be there. This is the salary will be there. So first six months, first three months, all the salary will come out. All the whatever you put cow dung, all the cow dung will come out. Afterwards, whatever that kitchen waste will be there. Na, in that only will remain. If we only suppose after three months, if we want to open the uh, uh, this plant, you will you will see only water only. So all the bacteria, the cow dung bacteria will remain in that digester and it will react. So this is the uh, um, uh, advantage of this plant and um, economical benefit of this plant. So saving the LPG, uh, you can save, uh, suppose if you purchase the plant within a one, one year, six months, you can save the cost. Uh, but we are not uh, given money for the safe waste disposal. Uh, this is the environment benefit, a decent way of disposal of waste. Uh, faster method of decomposing method, and uh, mm -hmm. here I given social benefit, annual foreign exchange saving, and to do that uh, already told to the time and dangerous gas. And uh, how we developed this model? So we have goes on asking the people. We went many uh, IITs and uh, NITs, all the research centers. So we have uh, designed this plant. Actually, these are the best. Actually, when, uh, whatever the carbohydrate material gives more gas. Whatever material uh, gives more strength, more energy material will give more strength. Fish will give more uh, energy, and uh, non-vegetarian waste will give more energy, and uh, wheat rice will give more energy. 
instead of that we can go for pungam cake neem cake everything and the water ipamia uh, this also we can go, uh, we can go it and this is the uh, tamburul we actually we exactly we are not telling 5 kg is required sometimes if you go for uh, suppose you have only 4 kg of waste you put 4 kg of waste you will get 4 kg amount of gas and uh, that much amount of manure will get it so tea leaf waste also we put it uh, kanji kanji will give good uh, gas whatever the rice wa uh, washing water is and that also it gives the uh, good gas and this is the uh, method the so first is hydrolysis stage acidic stage methanic stage i already told you but detail i can say now uh, this is the temperature so i heard in the morning our uh, sir told about temperature that sir 35 to 45 degree temperature uh, and above 45 degree temperature is in the thermophilic bacteria the faster digestion will be happen and hydraulic transition time is important the hydraulic transition time means whatever you put material how many days will take for digesting this is very important actually there uh, so many things are the solid concentration in initial inoculum initial inoculum also is important suppose you want to start the pl uh, plant immediately you can go for inoculum otherwise you have to wait for 28 days so you have to cover down with the water if you mix it when you put it in the uh, digester you have to wait for 28 days for developing the microbes so if you put initial inoculum first itself we, we will not wait for 28 days Uh, this is the advantage of our method. We have put inlet in center. So once we put inlet in center, it will go spread everywhere. Then bacteria reacts very fast, and you will get uh, very uh, quick digestion. So this is our model design, and um, no partition. Everything is given. Uh, this is the advantage of our model. Uh, sorry, I will go fast because time is very less. Uh, this is the uh, mold we made. It. Earlier our model is not. um training nowadays is training because of mold we have model 0.25 cubic meter to 6 cm plant and we have given the uh, plant to everywhere in all over india we have given many research institute taken the uh, plant for testing that uh, uh, different type of feed material Now, this is the fixed model uh, this is very easy method whenever we talk about biogas plant people you, you have to go for 15, 15 days Uh, training uh, training and then only you can consider the plan uh, and uh, it will take minimum 10 days for constructing the plan the remaining model our model you can consider very fast this is for only kitchen waste purpose so we have level the soil above the ground we can go two brick layer above that four rings will be the cement ring you have to make it and uh, four rings we are keeping it this is outlet pipe and this is a water removal pipe will be there uh, so this is the arrangement very simple method uh, within 3 uh, hours or half a day we can construct the plant this is small light flooring can be done uh, this is a flooring because already even you put cow dung automatically uh, stop the leakage so this is the method uh, this is the final stage this is a gas holder uh, and you have to put cow dung with water and uh, you have to do it at many places the uh, in government tamil nadu government they gives Uh, subsidy for only fixed model if you go for uh, fixed model uh, we will get subsidy you can go for this type of model this type of if you go for this type of model the construction cost will be very less and uh, mm. subsidy also will get it uh, there are different uh, places will get different type of subsidy in tamil nadu you will get only one subsidy but in case of karnataka you will get two subsidy uh, tamil nadu gets only one subsidy means you will get only central government state government there is no subsidy but in the case of uh, karnataka we will get two subsidy central government also will give the subsidy state government also will give the subsidy if we go for uh, tribal area full uh, plant will get uh, free of cost so this is a 2d thing and there is interlocking ring also is there there will not be for leakage avoiding leakage in between the uh, ring this type of ring also you can go in instead of cement ring you can go for fiber ring also so this are the model 2 km meter 3 km meter like that we can construct it we have we are doing a lot of research on that they were tied uh, in some water like a small size we tried to bigger size in that we can uh, put fish we can cultivate the fish like that so we are doing many a thing and if we have got the patent uh, this plan so we have uh, got patent in india south africa china and sri lanka uh, so this are the patent certificate i have showed you Uh, and we are transferring the technology in state wise so we have transferred many many states uh, 
uh, five six states uh, in uh, India. The Vijay industry would it be there? Man, they are taking our technology. They are uh, manufacturing our plant and uh, giving to the uh, people. They are themselves selling it. And uh, here, uh, you know, UP. This is UP for Azola Amirdan Private Limited is uh, doing the work, and our uh, Yogiji is seeing the plant. So this is we developed a biomass based biogas plant. Actually, the biomass means uh, you have to put more waste. You will get very less gas. That's why the volume of digestive big uh, sizes increases and the portable cow dung based biogas plant. Suppose people are having one or two cows, so what you can do go they can go for portable cow dung based biogas plant. So that also we have developed, and this is batch type. Suppose they have a home, uh, a lot of leaves and uh, waste will be there. So if you go for batch type, this is the batch type. One time you have to fill it everything. So up to gas comes, you have to use it. Afterwards you have to uh, um, uh, you have to remove it. You have to remove this uh, uh, manure also, and uh, again you have to refill it. This is, this is the method. Here you can see uh, we have tried different type of uh, feed material. We want to make as a pellet. So this is, research is going on all over the world. We have tried that kofor is giving very good result, and uh, um, this uh, pungam and um, odati and all we have tried. So we have got good, very good result in the kofor. So this is the method uh, uh, julie flour and all we tried. Uh, we make as made as a pellet and all. And another final, this is the bio toilet system. So bio toilet system is nothing but uh, this is biogas system only. So the, the biogas system, if you go for kitchen waste plan, after after completing the process, you will get only liquid. Here also that bacteria, if you put it in the your kitchen waste, uh, sorry, uh, your toilet, automatically it uh, decomposes the. Uh, toilet waste in the converted into the water. So, very simple method. This is the process. You have to go, have partition. The first to partition, whatever you have, uh, slurry comes outside. The slurry you have to put it in that uh, separate tank. So, what will happen? It automatically it decomposes. It will make as a liquid form. Then it will go out. Uh, you will get very less amount of parity. Maximum it will go for liquid portion. This is a bio toilet. You can say it in your home also. Very simple method. And um, uh, we can convert it to any separate tank, either you can convert it to the bio toilet system. If you are constructing bigger size plant also, so we are constructing uh, many bigger size plant we constructed in all over India. Uh, this is the Mamalapram project. Uh, so, um, also we constructed, Amamalapram directly we, we don't go because our volunteer organization, we don't go for tender and all. So somebody has taken the uh, tender. And they wanted us a technical guidance. We are given the guidance. So whoever we constructed, he is working very well. Two, three places are only constructed. This is the bigger size plant. We go for this type of method. This is a hydrology stage. Hydrology means one stage. This is a faculty of uh, And we have to keep it some time. So automatically decompose the waste. And this is the crusher. It is crushing it. That is the yellow color is in, red color for blue color is in, It is the crusher. It crushes the waste. Then it goes to the uh, yeah, feeding uh, tank. So this is the slurry pump. You can see the slurry pump. How uh, arrangement done? Very simple method. Maintenance of uh, bigger size plant is very easy than smaller size plant because the bigger size plant you can crush the waste. So like our this uh, biogas plant plant also like our uh, stomach only. So if you crush it, if, uh, suppose whenever if you crush and eat it, it will be very faster. Like that also. If you, here also, if you crush it, it will be very faster digestion. So you will get uh, gas is very fast. When you put kanji uh, after uh, boiling water, is the rice boiling water, uh, within, within an hour you will get the gas. Suppose if you put any uh, sugar waste and uh, sugar uh, bakery item, you will get within three, four hours gas. So the hatchati will be very, uh, very less. Uh, if, you, if you go for uh, uh, solid portion, it will take more time, 30 days hatchati. 40 days hatchati. Hatchati means hydraulic tension time. So how many days will take for digesting the material? That is the thing. So this is a generator, uh, biogas generator. We are doing it. The biogas generator is very easy thing. Uh, we are not doing anything uh, for, uh, we are not manufacturing biogas generator. But nowadays, many models have come. Many companies have come uh, in the biogas generator. There is a dual fuel generator also is there. So we can uh, uh, purchase and you have to connect the biogas plant. Uh, dual fuel means it will work in the gas, sometimes it will work in the uh, diesel also. So this is the uh, CNG plant. We have done it in uh, 
and they given to the baba uh, this baba ramdev ashram uh, this is the psa system uh, psa and pressure swing absorption method here based on pressure methane will separate to carbon dioxide will separate carbon dioxide also we can take it and we can use it for medical purpose methane can be converted uh, uh, as a cng gas this is a you can see that blue color is a compressor this is the uh, cylinder is there so we can go for many uh, bar system uh, 20 bar system 30 bar system and uh, 100 bar up to 100 bar we can go 200 bar also we can go so if you go for uh, uh, increase the bar uh, pressure automatically you increase the thickness of uh, uh, this cylinder also we used to give training actually in kendra uh, we have many branch centers and many used to come for training program and many agriculture department uh, we used to give number of training program to agriculture department many uh, people comes for uh, kanyakumari for uh, awareness uh, we have gramodaya darshan park so exhibition is there to see the uh, many technologies so many people used to come here for uh, uh, awareness program many mainly uh, agriculture department brings the uh, a uh, farmers here and many all over india people comes we give training to the all over india people so many uh, i can uh, here i can say 100 not 100 thousands of people we are given awareness program and uh, thousands of people we are given training also uh, program actually what happens now whenever uh, our uh, our kendra uh, method we are not anybody ask biogas plant we will not give the biogas plant to them so if we give the biogas plant to them simply what they will do uh they will uh, uh, start uh, start uh, charging it and some problem comes and they will they will uh, blame the technology so we don't want to blame the technology actually many places always people are doesn't know anything about the technology they blame the technology but in kendra uh, whoever wants the biogas plant they will will say you have to undergo the training they say why you have to undergo the training then we will say at, at least awareness plant. suppose we have 30 people 40 people your area you call us we give the awareness program so without awareness without training program uh, if they take the, the technology that will be failure because whenever people comes here we tell positive also negative also whenever the marketing people are that they will say only positive but in kendra if you come the training there are lot of negative point also there we tell the negative points this is a bacteria reaction uh, we will say if the bacteria reaction you should not put uh, uh, this toxic material in that one and um, And another one also, if you put overfeeding also, it will give the problem. Like the lot of thing, we will say people should know the uh, should know the uh, uh, method of working. So many people think this is a machine like that, but many people doesn't know about the microbe reaction, and uh, they will wanted this plant. And uh, many will ask uh, very ordinary question also. They will say your plant is working only in the kitchen waste, but other other we are purchasing another one, another one man another one man says this plant works. Kaudang also and the kitchen waste. We say if he says now he is telling lies only because Kaudang best plant means you have to go for the number one model KVC model. That is the best model. If you go for kitchen waste plant, you have to, this is the model. Our secretary model is a good. Other model also the, is that you can go. But uh, when you uh, uh, when you uh, talk about uh, in the kitchen waste plant in the Kaudang, this is not a good. Actually, we say mainly. People comes and we say you should not go for cow dung in that our sexy survey model. So this is the uh, thing. We have brought out many booklets. Very simple method. Simple. It will be uh, uh, very easily understandable. We have cartoons. Everything will make it. So then the uh, reader will be easily can understand. So these are the booklets we brought out, uh, and these are the um, uh, documentary uh, we brought it out. so you can see our website some of thing uh, and some of thing uh, we have to upload in the website so these are the achievements uh, so you can see the achievements uh, so different type of thing awareness everything i will talk to you so this is our overall uh, subject thank you this is my our email id is there phone number also is there anybody can note it down afterwards uh, anything is there you can talk directly to me Uh, thank you sir any question is there uh, you can ask me
Uh, namaste Ramakrishna ji. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Basically, the presentation is a, a either of all your the work you've been doing for the past uh, many decades. And I'm sure um, 45 minutes is hardly any time for you to cover. But thank you so much for covering the main topics. Uh, we have one question. Uh, I request the participants, if you have any question, you can share it uh, on the chat. Uh, however, one question from Shailaja Palaniwale is, um, what is done in Azola cultivation and how is the protein content enhanced? That was one question. He says, uh, actually, uh, I have given one email ID to you. Here is an, actually, you can contact us through mail because this is a simple procedure only. You have to spread the sheet and um, uh, initially you have to add cow dung with uh, soil. And you would put the uh, Asola seed. It is available in the uh, Agriculture University in Kendra also. Actually, there is a small technique you have to undergo the training or awareness, something. Uh, this is a very short period to tell about detail about the Asola technology. It's short period. You can talk to me afterwards also. This is the number is there. You can talk to me. Or the mail also you can give, we will give send the details to you. G, uh, uh, do you provide uh, biogas? Uh, plants of 2000 kgs per day, uh, like large scale uh, biogas plants, do you? Um, yes, we are constructing the plant. Yes, we used to do it. Actually, we have to see the field visit uh, first, uh, how much waste is there and the area, how much area is required uh, and all. So, uh, the field visit is important. So, after that, we can uh, uh, do it. We are doing it many places. We are constructing the house. 100 kilometer, 200 kilometer plan. Uh, any capacity we can construct it. You can contact me, uh, sir. This is our email ID that you can contact me. Or personally, my number also is there. You can contact me. I will get, I'll help you, no problem. Do you conduct training programs if someone wants to create awareness in our native villages? Um, yes, sir, definitely. This is our, mot our motto only. Because we are interested to give awareness program, we will come to your place, we will give the awareness program to you because this is our, our uh, life. Will. Because uh, people, are, if you are interested, we will come definitely, we will come to your place and give the training program without charge, no charge, we will come and give the training program. People should know that about the technology. This is our aim. Uh, gee, you can actually, if you're able to see the chat, you can choose to reply to the question. There are many questions coming in, G. I'll, I'll just read uh, some of them. Um, you can also take a look at the website. Um, uh, any uh, online training programs, uh, Ramakrishna? Yes, it is going on tomorrow also. One training program is there. Biogas technology training program is there. And we give training on composting techniques. So okay. tomorrow is the training program is there. So afternoon, uh, biogas technology training is there. Morning is the composting technique training is there. That is the email ID. There are website is there. That website already written. In the website, you can uh, go through it. That is the training program there. Tomorrow also the training program is there. You can attend. I'll also share the website on the link on the chat. Um, G also maybe if uh, you could share how they could subscribe to your newsletter to stay updated with all your activities, uh, upcoming um, awareness programs, if they want to, um, uh, you know, yes, so that. Definitely, uh, there, is our web, there is our email ID, the vknodup at gmail.com. Mm, I am not... Um, sure. I'll also yes. share it, G. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I'm moving on to the next question, which I am sure many people will have this question. In villages, if families have four or five cows, uh, generating biogas beyond their need, is it feasible to pack cylinders and sell to urban residents? Is this... No, no, it is not possible. If you go for... Uh, a CNG plant, uh, minimum 500 cubic meters uh, capacity is required. 500 cubic meter means, uh, so uh, just before one uh, gentleman uh, asked about 2000 kg waste is there like that. So for the type of uh, waste is feasible because this plant cost itself it will, uh, about 50 lakhs of rupees. For five, five cows, you will get very less amount of gas only. Only two cubic meter uh, gas only will get it. It is good for thermal purpose, for uh, cooking purpose is good, not more than that. So for compression, do we need any um, uh, uh, prior permission from the government? Or yes, yes. Uh, we have to get permission from uh, central government. There is the explosive license is there. 
so uh, in nagpur uh, we have to apply it and they will do the online monitoring afterwards only they will give a certificate to us to uh, compress the biogas plant and there are a lot of procedure is there uh, in tamil nadu uh, we have done it nearly in virudhunagar because this is near sivagas area so they didn't give permission to us and uh, i don't know i don't think that the uh, uh, residential area also will not be available uh, uh, residential area we have to be in uh, uh, we have to go interior area the, the surrounding 100 meter there should not be any building and all like that area only they will give permission uh, Raji, uh, I think uh, I'll just continue with a few more questions because these are very relevant. Um, uh, what is the minimum cost and land required for a small model? Yes, and also, uh, how do you think is it? Uh, how, what is its feasibility in the urban context uh, for biogas plants? Yes, sir, so this is a, uh, suppose the four, four square four feet dia is uh, enough for. Uh, one kilometer biogas plant, four feet dia enough for uh, constructing biogas plant. Suppose we go for a flat system uh, housing, so you have to collect the, all the waste, and uh, you, uh, you can have uh, in the uh, that uh, one particular area for uh, converting waste into the uh, uh, manure and the gas. So we have to have we have to collect all the waste. Suppose uh, a flat system is there, suppose 500 houses are there, so all the waste will be collected in one place and we have to segregate it and we have to, uh, you, uh, you have to we can uh, consider a biogas plant in that area. That is the feasible. Otherwise, uh, suppose we have individual house, you can have that portable uh, biogas plant is there, you can install in your terrace. So, but sunlight uh, is required, you have to keep it in the terrace or in the near kitchen also you can keep it. Is there any difference between the uh, gas quality with res uh, with desi cows and uh, jersey cows or other? Um, or is Actually, there any evaluation that's been done? No, Jay? no, uh, we don't know exactly, but you have not done it. This is a good thing. We have to do it now. Uh, we have not done it. Kendra have not done it anything. Um, okay. Uh, from where can we get Shakti Surabhi biomethanation plant? Yes, uh, yes, Vivekananda Kendra only. We have given a phone number and email ID. So you can contact me. Uh, you can contact us. This is my phone number. Afterwards, I'll give to our uh, sales uh, person. I will give to them. Aji, uh, one question because uh, uh, many people who are joining us today are also farmers or uh, owners of small goshalas across okay, the country. Yeah. So uh, we, we also see that many biogas plants, as you also would have faced, uh, it becomes a failure after, uh, you know, uh, init say initially a large biogas plant is set up. After that, uh, you know, if cow dung is not put, it might stop functioning. So the question here is if we opt for a one cubic meter capacity plant, and if we suppose, uh, if suppose required cow dung is not there to generate gas, what will be the consequences? Uh, can it be restarted or will it have to be cleaned fully? What is the process? Actually, if uh, uh, always we says five years once we have to uh, remove the, all the sludge from uh, biogas plant and, uh, uh, and recharge it again, you have to recharge with the cow dung with the water. Uh, that can be done. Suppose uh, if you have one kilometer biogas plant, if you sell the uh, cow in your home, suppose if you have two, how, two cow in your home, suppose uh, you are selling the two cow there will not be any cow uh, in your home, then you can go for a kitchen waste plant. So you can uh, put kitchen waste in that one, so automatically it works. In the cow dung plant, you can uh, put the kitchen waste, but kitchen waste biogas plant, you can't put to cow dung. So the cow dung waste biogas plant, you can put the kitchen waste also, and you can link the toilet if you want. So many may not like it linking the toilet, but the linking toilet is a very good option because you will. Uh, uh, save a lot of money in constructing uh, constructing the leach pit or uh, separate tank. So this is the thing. Yes, this is this. I think uh, the the questions are um, yeah. So if anybody has more questions, you can um, definitely get in touch with Ramakrishna ji. Very approachable, and uh, he is basically the entire team of Vivekananda Kendra have dedicated their lives to making this possible. Uh, I uh, clearly remember when we went there for the first time. 
uh, with the students it was uh, you know eco friendly uh, buildings and these were new words for us but they have literally been working on this for over you know since 1970s or 80s if i'm not wrong uh, so um, very very happy to uh, have you uh, to have had you as a part of this uh, event uh, g and uh, looking forward to um, staying in touch thank you priya actually uh, 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 that anadi foundation also ideology similar to vivekananda kendra so actually i also love that anadi foundation but i cannot come there as you once i have to come there and uh, thanks for giving opportunity to me to give the presentation thank you sister not at all ji definitely you. welcome when you come uh, yes sir, definitely you to come thank you ji okay thank you sister so um next we'll be having um uh, uh, we'll just take a one minute uh, break before uh, our uh, resuming with the next session Uh, i request all of you to stay online but we'll just uh, take a minute before uh, we begin the next theme for today's uh, uh, evening session Uh, namaste everyone uh, our next speaker will be joining us uh, in an around uh, in around 15 minutes before that uh, i think some of you had a question if the recording will be available uh, the meeting is being live streamed on facebook so that will be available throughout uh, we will also be uploading the uh, videos of the morning session and the evening session on uh, youtube i what i'll do in the meantime is i'll quickly share a, a couple of slides that will give an overview of uh, you know what we mean by cow centric sustainability um i hope all of you are able to see my screen
Jesus. So this is basically a thought experiment that we do here, uh, you know, at the foundation when we work with a lot of youth uh, is, you know, if, we, if one were to imagine a self-reliant or a sustainable life, uh, at least in, at the foundation here, our main philosophy is around building self-reliance and then moving on to sustainability uh, because uh, we believe that self-reliance li lies at the core of sustainability. And hence, when we, uh, you know, if we were to reimagine our lives or reimagine, uh, you know, the whole context of food, uh, health, Health, uh, lifestyle, buildings, uh, you know, uh, starting from scratch, we, uh, we fundamentally look at what are the dimensions that have to be taken care of, you know, it initially the most fundamental would be food, of course, good quality water, air, um, you know, plants. And then, of course, there is construction and energy. These three, we felt, are one of the three main pillars of uh, life as well as of sustainable development. And this is where we felt that along all of these three dimensions, the contribution of uh, cow dung uh, is uh, phenomenal. Uh, so I think uh, from the morning session and evening session, we've touched upon sufficiently on uh, you know biogas uh, uh, as well as uh, you know V K Vijay, Professor V K Vijay also shared about uh, biogas to electricity electricity and other such technologies. Uh, so which can really change, uh, you know, and shift gears uh, in today's modern context from uh, oil based economy to a Gover based economy, for example. It has the potential to create rural self-reliance. We also hear of many model uh, villages and uh, you know community level biogas plants as well uh, across the country, uh, which have been successfully implemented. Where uh, you know like how there are milk cooperatives, right? There are dung cooperatives as well as um, as well where people from a community go and you know give their uh, dung to uh, a centralized uh, biogas plant. From where you know the cooking needs are also met, and there is a gas connection. Uh, by biogas connection to each house and uh, you know even the street lighting and electricity needs of uh, you know villages are also taken care of there is also the famous Janakpuri model and uh, other such models which through the sessions tomorrow or day after we'll be um, uh, sharing. And um, uh, on the last day, we have two speakers who will be talking about emerging construction materials using cow dung. Uh, this at a small scale uh, you know have you know when we talk about um, uh, earth friendly construction or building uh, houses with mud uh, cow dung is an important additive that we add because of its binding uh, property and uh, it keeps the structure together uh, it has that uh, those properties that make it an excellent construction material whether it's cob or even adobe bricks uh, we'll also be uh, hearing from two researchers one researcher from netherlands and um, uh, one founder of a startup working with um, you know cow dung uh, to make interior and exterior panels uh, for construction. So both of these are very powerful uh, ideas and uh, innovations. And of course, uh, we've also looked at uh, in today's uh, session uh, from with uh, Prabhakar Rao ji on how um, uh, it can contribute to strengthening the existing food system in a very holistic way. So today uh, with modern agriculture and uh, you know chemical based agriculture, the problem is that when you try to increase the yield uh, right, of plants using fertilizers or pesticides, uh, the soil quality ends up um, going very low, uh, which means that uh, with increase in production of plants or crops, uh, the, systematically year after year, the soil quality keeps degrading. And uh, this is one of the major causes of land degradation today. Uh, I, uh, in our interaction here, we always discuss about how climate change uh, all of us are very aware of, uh, which is very important. You know, we talk about carbon footprint and um, how can we reduce our impact on the planet along those dimensions. But uh, one topic that is actually very, very uh, urgent, uh, but very less discussed about is, uh, you know, land degradation or soil degradation. And um, in the past 150 years, we've lost over 50% of our fertile soil. And uh, when we say fertile soil, you know, the top, uh, you know, few centimeters is where actually, which actually has uh, the essential microbes and nutrients for agriculture to happen. And this we are losing at a very, very uh, alarming rate. Uh, one reason is, of course, uh, you know, reasons like... Uh, uh, wind erosion and so on. But the major reason for this is uh, the advent of chemical-based agriculture. And that's where, uh, and it also contributes to climate change 
exchange because then you know soil is the largest carbon sink a terrestrial carbon sink and when the soil is stripped out uh, of its um, nutrients uh, you know a lot of carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere so it's like sort of a vicious cycle where you know there is chemical agriculture uh, in the production of which there are a lot of greenhouse gas emissions and applying that on the soil also leads to further degradation with which again further exacerbates um, you know climate change by emission of um, uh, greenhouse gases but when we uh, you know shift to uh, cow dung based or cow manure based uh, agricultural inputs uh, it is the other way around uh, the soil health is strengthened and uh, in today's research uh, uh, wilbax will also be sharing about how uh, cow manure actually not just strengthens soil fertility but also helps uh, sequester carbon so this makes uh, you know uh, uh, cow based uh, go farming uh, a very very potent and uh, powerful tool to uh, combat food security nutrition security soil health as well as I'll share a video before his presentation uh, which will help you uh, you know understand this uh, powerful idea i'm sharing a youtube video right now just give me a minute uh, just let me know in the chat if the audio is not clear. Uh, the researcher who has worked on this project will be joining us today. Uh, the, uh, the farmer whom you can see in the video uh, was uh, very interested to join, but because of the California drought could not join us for this uh, event. Um, one of the researchers, um, Will Bax, will be joining us shortly. One of the biggest contributors to climate change could be turned into one of the most powerful solutions. This man was just trying to get rid of the weeds on his ranch when he stumbled upon a way to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. In 
हेलो क्या आप लोग मुझसे सुन सकते हैं यस जी यस हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल ये साक्षी जी और ऑडिबल वी आर एबल टू हियर यू वेलकम जी या जस्ट अ मिनट जी वन हेलो हेलो एवरीवन नाउ विथ अस इज साक्षी जी फ्रॉम कुमारप्पा नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हैंडमेड पेपर शी इज पार्ट ऑफ द रिसर्च टीम हु हैज व्हिच हैज कम अप विथ प्राकृतिक पेंट एंड यू हैव हर्ड इट राइट प्राकृतिक पेंट पेंट इज नॉट अ केमिकल व्हिच वी आर अफ्रेड ऑफ paint which comes from an organic and a sustainable source the more you use the better it is so this is a invention which is presently marketed and sent out from khadi india the primary research hub behind this khadi india process uh, is kvic and the team which is research team involved with it is from kumarappa national institute of handmade paper there they have done many experiments on cow dung and from cow dung they were able to successfully make handmade paper and also paint that is now being marketed through khadi india now we have a part of the team miss sakshi ji she will speak about her experience her uh, work in kumarappa institute and then we will share the broader video addressing the khadi paint and next time when you guys have a small repair in your home or if you want to repaint your all your homes we can directly go to khadi india's prakritik paint this way more sustainable and then money to the right research areas and also promoting bharatita okay now sakshi ji you can please continue i hand over you can share your experiences about the research going on up on in kumarappa institute thank you everyone thank you so much uh, am i able to all of yes miss sakshi ji you are audible okay so a kumar professional hand made paper should actually we have done studies on utilization of cow dung for making various products as come to us now including handmade paper paint soap and various other products so in uh, kumarappa national handmade paper institute and khadi and village industries commission it's the not anonymous body it recognized by department of scientific and industrial research government of india so uh, the motto uh, uh, is that uh, we should all get uh, 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 they can earn uh, a rate of rupees five per. So that is a main intention that these farmers and goshalas they if they are keeping the cows uh, when it is not giving milk. an emulsion paint from utilizing cow dung and other parts um, so uh, 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 u
2013 and uh, for immersion also we have the parameters satisfy the desired standards of bis that is 1489 so uh, it was very much enthusiastic because during the COVID-19 uh, there is something positive thing also that persons uh, want to become entrepreneurs so this training uh, we have seen many tra many trainees uh, uh, and still uh, the, um, hello hello Sakshi Hello, Sakshi ji. So we are facing a bit of a lag from your side. So we are, we are, we'll take a pause and then we will share the video from uh, KVIC so that the viewers can have a clearer perspective. close her way. Meeting control is not open.
Hello. I hope you have all seen the wonderful video from the team KVIC. And the best part is it is eco-friendly. Not only that, it is cheaper than the mainstream paints. And certified in the same standard. So we hope this could become part of your lifestyle ahead. Now, we have our esteemed speaker, Will Bax, whose introductory video we have seen just a few minutes before. Now, I'll ask our program director, Pragna Ji, to introduce to all of you, uh, Dr. Will. Uh, very sorry about the minor technical glitch uh, over there. Uh, I hope uh, the video and audio is clear right now. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome uh, Will Bax, uh, who is joining us from the US uh, today, and who will be sharing uh, his work on, uh, uh, you know, the composting potential of uh, cow manure and how uh, that sequesters carbon, as seen in the video. Let me take us uh, some time to introduce uh, uh, Will to all of you. Uh, so, Will Bax is a soil scientist and a principal at Renewable Sonoma. With an MS in soil science from UC Berkeley, Will Bax is the co-founder and current chair of the California Organic Recycling Council, CORC, and executive board member of the California Compost Coalition. Will Bax launched Bennett Valley Farm Compost in 1985, processing various agricultural and fish industry discards. In 1993, he started the Sonoma Countrywide Yard Debris Composting Program as Sonoma Compost Company, having diverted over um, 1,80,000 uh, tons of organic um, organics towards soil amends. He is currently working as a compost consultant and as principal at Renewable Sonoma. He is the adjunct compost instructor at uh, the Santa Rosa Junior College and serves as the chair of SRJC Sustainable Agricultural Advisory Committee. Uh, thank you, uh, Will, for joining us. Um, and uh, let me um, hand it over to you. Just a minute. I'm making you the co-host. Uh, we look forward to hearing your insights uh, and your presentation. Over to you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to hear, be here. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. Um, I see I cannot turn on my, oh, there it is. Um, okay, so let me see if I can pull up my presentation. Who can share? Can I share uh, my presentation here? Yes, uh, you you would see an option called share screen below. At the yeah, I see share. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Uh, here we go. And go full screen. Okay. Yes, we are now able to see it. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me to uh, speak. Um, so um, first, I want to make a statement about uh, composting versus raw manure. Um, I prefer, uh, uh, from a soil science point of view, a, a composted manure. Uh, the nutrients are more stabilized. Uh, in doing so, we reduce the leaching potential uh, of nutrients into our groundwaters. The nutrients have been converted into a plant available form. and it becomes a slow, re slow release nutrient. So uh, in other words, if you apply raw manure, all the manure, all the nutrients may be available right now. You get a rain and the nutrients will wash away. However, when it's composted, it becomes a slow release where the nutrients are being released throughout the growing season. And that also introduces a very rich uh, community of microorganisms. Uh, there is no negative effect on plants, uh, whereas manures may have some uh, phytotoxicity related to uh, plant growth. There's no odors, which we know that uh, raw manure definitely has uh, odors associated with it. And potential diseases are also controlled in the uh, composting process where the temperature goes up over 55 degrees Celsius, killing not only uh, diseases, but uh, also potential uh, weed seeds that may be present. And it works better as a, a tool to uh, store car carbon in the soil that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and so um, 
we we've composted uh, dairy manure at uh, West Moraine Compost. We actually are located at a dairy farm, but we also looked at being a, a regional uh, solutions to organics in general. And um, we have a lot of horse ranches around that did not know what to do with their manure. Uh, we also have a lot of yard debris uh, that people want to have compost as well. So we looked at combining all these sources uh, to make uh, compost with. I believe that if you have a uh, more diverse feedstock that you get a, a more well-rounded compost coming out with um, more complex uh, uh, combination of nutrients present in that compost. Then you have the option later on to use other products um, like high nitrogen manures, et cetera, to make uh, diverse products. Uh, if you click on the logo, and I'll make this presentation available as a PDF, uh, this logo is clickable, for instance, you can look at uh, the different products that we make there. And it is quite a big line of products that we make looking at uh, different uh, resources that come into the facility. From the dairy manure, we take uh, two different sources. One is uh, manure that comes out of the corrals, and the other one uh, comes out of the loafing barns, which you see in the background out here. Um, so here's a look into the uh, loafing barn. We just uh, re received a grant that uh, West Marine Compost wrote for the dairy uh, to convert the uh, dairy from a flush uh, manure harvesting system where they uh, wash the manure out to a scrape system. And you can see here the bar that scrapes through this channel out here. The cows will just lift up their legs, step over this bar while the manure is being pushed out is the pulley that pulls the uh, bar forward. Uh, the advantage for us, uh, for the dairy to do this here, is that uh, we got a better quality manure because if you wash the manure out, uh, a lot of the water soluble nutrients will get in the wash water and is not in the manure anymore. And actually the dairy manure before we went to a scrape system was our lowest quality input in our compost system. Whereas now it's a nice high quality uh, compost. Oh, uh, high quality uh, manure. Um, that manure is collected in a pit and then it's pumped up to our compost facility. When it arrives at our facility, we have a um, press auger here that squeezes uh, more moisture out of the uh, manure. The moisture goes into a pond and is used to uh, adjust the moisture content of the compost and then the manure is stored here and as soon as possible blended with the other resources and placed in a windrow for composting. Here's a sample of the horse manure that we're taking in and the yard debris that people drop off. Uh, this was on a special day. Uh, we have a lot of fires in our area and um, we let people come in for free uh, to reduce the fire potential in the area by taking out dead wood, et cetera. Uh, and that material is ground up and that is then blended with the other manures. Uh, you have to look at the economic viability when we set up a facility like this here. Uh, there's quite an infrastructure associated with it. As you saw the grinder, they're not cheap, but there's a screen at the end. Uh, depending on material that you get in, you may need sort line to clean up material, aeration systems, etc. cetera. Um, there are best management practices to deal with air water quality um, and all of that costs money. So uh, the money that we can get from the compost may not offset the cost of the operation. And therefore we look at a tipping fee for material that come in uh, in order to process them into a compost. This is an overview of the uh, compost site. We have uh, six of those rows in active composting. You can see in the back here, the uh, windrow turner that goes to the compost. Here's a close up of it. Uh, incidentally, you see some, this was during the rainy season, some mushroom decomposers showing up at the site out here that we have an active system out here. Temperatures running over 55 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, one of the disadvantages of the uh, windrow composting is that there are still a lot of emissions coming off the compost and I'll show in a little bit uh, a new compost system that uh, I'm promoting right now um, 
to reduce emissions from the compost side so that we uh, become more um, climate change friendly as a compost facility. In wind, we place uh, tarps over the windrows. Uh, this is a breathable tarp, compost decks, that will wick the water away from the compost piles so that we don't oversaturate the compost piles in winter. Uh, here's uh, another site that I owned in Sonoma County and a uh, much larger site. Uh, we processed about 100,000 tons per year, uh, again, still using the turned windrow system. A uh, movement that we see more and more in the United States is uh, compost dairy barns, uh, where you leave the manure in the uh, dairy barns, add sawdust or another bulking agent to it, and you basically compost in situ. Now, the temperature does not quite get up to the uh, safeguards of 55 degrees Celsius. They usually run between uh, 50 to um, or what is it in Celsius, uh, 60 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, so I recommend that afterwards that you still do a composting process. In this system, it's really important what kind of bedding you use. Uh, you don't wanna have a bedding where the cell walls can break and release water uh, because water is a big problem if you get too much water in this composting system. Uh, normally with composting, we look at a moisture content of uh, 55 to 65%. In these composting barns, you look at 40 to 55% moisture content, else the manure will stick to the udders of the cow, which is not good. Uh, it takes about two turnings per week to keep the uh, process aerobic. And as I said earlier, I do recommend that um, you do post uh, composting for uh, food security that you have killed the pathogens in the uh, manure. Below are two links that give you more detail of uh, this type of system, uh, what kind of beddings to use and, and in general, uh, the management of these uh, systems. So in order to be more climate friendly, um, a new composting system is uh, being utilized more and more in the United States and it's called covered aerated static pile. And instead of having a window turner that uh, temporarily increases the porosity of the uh, compost piles, you force the air uh, with a, a blower through the compost pile. The advantage of that is that uh, we run this system, for instance, uh, 30 minutes off and one to two minutes air on. <clears throat> you have throughout the composting process, optimum oxygen content in the compost pile. Whereas if you have a window turn composting, uh, we turned about once a week. In between, you're gonna have zones of anaerobic uh, composting because the air that is incorporated to turning is gone in 20 minutes and the compost compacts over time and so there will be less and less oxygen available. With this system, you have opt optimum uh, oxygen content in the compost pile at all times. Um, so you have uh, reduced environmental impacts. We used a lime treated uh, soil uh, so we can operate year round and protect the uh, groundwater. There is a bioswill behind the compost site. So all the runoff water from uh, the compost site runs through this bioswill. So we biologically treat it before it leaves the site. We constructed a hedgerow between the compost site and the farm so that uh, we minimize dust uh, drift off uh, onto the farm. And adjacent to it, we don't grow uh, vegetables that uh, will not be cooked. Um, just for, uh, again, food security. You'll see in a little bit that we put a biofilter on top of the uh, compost pile, and that is made of uh, finished compost. And so any uh, air that is pushed through the compost pile will go through this biofilter, and it reduces the emissions of uh, the compost system compared to window composting by about 85%. Uh, we use tarps in the winter on these piles, again, to give more control over the moisture content in the pile. It uses less energy, and particularly if you use solar, then we use less uh, petrochemical energy as well. It is less labor intensive, and a big advantage is that uh, for pathogen reduction, uh, we can uh, achieve this here in three days in aerated, covered aerated static pile, whereas in windrow composting, it takes at least 15 days. 
So overall, you have a lot more control over the whole composting process. So here on the left, you see a picture of how we improve the soil with a lime treatment. Uh, this gives you a nice hard surface to work on year round and an infiltration rate so low that any leachate that comes off the compost pile will not get into the groundwater. On the right side, you see the uh, layout of, uh, and this is a small uh, demonstration site for on-farm composting. Uh, you always wanna have the finished product upstream from the water. Uh, so uh, the water here runs from this side to uh, the upper left corner. And so, uh, sorry for this here. Um, so uh, we have the finished compost, the phase two will be over here. We built the first phase uh, over here from the feedstock that is stored out here, blended in the center. Uh, and so this then is harvested and ready, ready to be used uh, in the field. This is the windbreak around the uh, compost site. And then this is the bio swill that is planted where the uh, runoff water runs through that cleans it up before it leaves the site. You don't have to have a very expensive system with uh, pumps. You can go with passive air as well. You lose some control over the system, but it's a lot cheaper. We use over here PVC piping. It doesn't last very long uh, with the heat that's in the pile. It will collapse and it becomes also very brittle. And in the next slides, you'll see that we use an HDPE piping, which is more expensive to begin with, but it will last for a very long time. What I want to note here is that you see steam coming off as it has heated up already. The color is white. That means that it has sufficient moisture content in it. If you see a brown color, that means that you're composting too dry. Again, we blend it with uh, all kinds of different materials. We have uh, grape pumice. We are a wine country out here, so uh, we have a lot of grape pumice available. We have uh, vegetative material from the farm and bring in various manures, create a material that has a carbon nitrogen ratio of 30 to 35 to one, and adjust the moisture content to about 60, 65% before it goes into that phase one composting system. With manures, you gotta be careful that we uh, don't get a uh, herbicide. It's a problem here in the United States, uh, particularly clopyrrolid is one. We test for that on a regular basis. Uh, so if you have anything like that, you want to test for that and make sure that you do not carry those around because some of these new uh, herbicides will actually survive the uh, composting process. They do not break down. So here you see the layout. We have a solar panel set up, a pump associated with it, and then a uh, air plenum that forces the air into this compost pile. Uh, temperatures being monitored on a daily basis. It has to be over 55 degrees Celsius for at least 15 days in windrow composting. Uh, in our system, since we have the bio layer on this here that acts as an insulator, the heat will come up all the way to the bio layer. The bio layer has been composted already and has met pasteurization reduction. So that way, everything actually meets pasteurization reduction in three days. Uh, the HDPE piping out here is a heavy duty piping. It will not be affected by the heat, but it does not have holes in it. We use um, a drain pipe as a uh, template to uh, mark the pipe where we want to have the holes in uh, the pipe. There are two holes that lay at the bottom facing the earth so that water can run out of the pipe but the air can flow through and uh, be incorporated in the pile. Here are the specs on the pump that we're using. It's a small pump, about a one and a half horsepower. Uh, we have a double um, manifold out here to get the air more evenly going into the piles. This is the bio layer that we put on top of it. It's recommended to put a bio layer of about uh, six to 12 inches on top of the uh, compost pile. And then here you see the blend of raw material that we are composting. For record keeping, uh, you want to keep a list of ingredients that you use so you can evaluate how successful your composting process is and what adjustments you need to make. Keep a temperature log, log and do a lab report on passing reduction, priority metals, and uh, contamination if that's an issue. So next, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, carbon uh, farming. And uh, this is something that um, we've been working on in the United States uh, for about 10 years now. Um, 
whenever we started working agricultural lands and we till the soil, we have been uh, decreasing the organic matter in the soil. And so the carbon that used to be in the soil is now in the atmosphere. Uh, probably uh, the CO2 in the atmosphere, about two thirds of the increase that we have of CO2 in the atmosphere comes actually from agricultural uh, lands, lands that have been tilled where the organic matter broke down. So with carbon farming planning, what we can do is uh, look at how we can uh, promote organic matter to grow in the soil and uh, increase the organic matter in soil and bring that uh, CO2 from the atmosphere back in the soil where it has nothing but benefits. And so carbon farming planning really has a basis that agriculture centers itself around carbon. And if we get organic matter back into the soil, all the rest will follow. We get uh, increased uh, water holding capacity, increased productivity, integrated pest management, et cetera, et cetera. So carbon farm planning becomes then the center of how we plan the whole farm and uh, in the uh, farming process. The principle is quite simple. It's based on photosynthesis, complete natural uh, program. And you look at all the interactions that take place on the farm uh, related to carbon and some other uh, greenhouse gases as well, because uh, we can also, by the use of uh, mulches and compost on the surface of the soil, reduce nitrous oxides, which are a uh, very potent greenhouse gas. We can reduce those emissions. Um, and so we look at the whole farm and uh, basically brainstorm, how can we maximize the uh, growing carbon into our agricultural soils? Um, the plants will take the energy from the sunlight combined with nutrients and water from the soil form simple uh, glucose and build cell walls uh, for plant growth, as well as exude organic matter through the roots. Uh, probably about 30 to 40% of the uh, organic matter that is photosynthesized by the plants is exuded through the roots to feed the microbial population in the soil, which in turn then stabilizes that organic matter and creates a organic matter humus that will last for a long, long time in the soil. So um, we started the Marine Carbon Project on rangeland uh, where um, it was postulated that if we would add compost to the rangeland, we could increase the organic matter on that rangeland and basically uh, help mitigate climate change, but moreover, create a healthier ranch with healthier soil um, that would be beneficial to the rancher. Now, in the beginning, we went a little bit overboard. Um, they used um, 1.25 centimeters of uh, compost. And I can definitely guarantee that if we do that, we do not have enough compost to go around. Um, they later on went to a quarter range to take half of that. And I think that we need to go lower than that even uh, to be successful. However, the changes that we saw with that, uh, and we also went to a specific range grazing uh, protocol uh, where we mimic, mimic, mimicked uh, the wildlife that used to be here, the elk that used to graze these lands, uh, they would come in with big herds, do a fast grazing and move on and let the grass grow back again. What we saw happening is that uh, these rangelands now have all non-native grasses that are shallow rooted grasses on it. And it reverted back to deep rooted uh, native grasses. So what that did is um, it allowed the roots to put more organic matter into the soil at deeper levels where the organic matter will also last longer, but also we got a more massive root ball underneath uh, the grass that could suppress the more carbon into that soil. So um, several years, this uh, system has been monitored and they saw that just with one application each year, there was still more carbon being sequestered in the soil. And computer models now have shown that for the next 30 years with that one application of compost, uh, there will be a uh, increase of organic matter in that soil for the next 30 years. 
So that's very promising. Since then, these carbon farming plants have been uh, adapted from uh, rain stand to also be applied to uh, vineyards, to uh, farmers that grow row crops, etc. so that we can uh, apply this carbon farming concept uh, to all of agriculture. Uh, I'm also working right now on carbon gardening, where I want to bring, bring it in the backyard so that people actually understand what carbon farming is, so that they actually will be motivated to buy carbon farm produce and actually stimulate farmers to actually grow carbon farmed produce uh, so that that's an interaction they get, get paid for uh, the investment that they make into the soil. Now, what we found in Marin County has to be verified if you want to do this in India. Uh, we have, for instance, right now 17 uh, different projects going on in California in different ecosystems where we look at different climatic conditions. How does it affect the carbon sequestration in these uh, locations? And so the same would have to happen in India as well, is you need to verify this. But once it has been established, then you can go with computer models to estimate what the carbon sequestration will be. So what they have been using is the uh, USDA Natural Resource Conservation Services planning process. It has, uh, I believe, an eight, nine step process, uh, how they evaluate uh, farms and implement uh, uh, farming processes. These now have been modified specifically to how do we do carbon farming uh, in rangeland, in vineyards and in uh, crop uh, growing. Based on this here, you do a brainstorming. It's not just uh, the compost that we apply, but we look also at uh, windbreaks that you can install, uh, riparian restoration. So the creeks that run through the uh, ranches, uh, restore the trees that used to grow in there that are no longer there. Uh, they store a lot of carbon, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it, it's, it's a whole concept that you'll see later on in a table that uh, looks at how you can maximize carbon storage on the farm. Quantification of these concepts is done through a, a greenhouse gas model called Comet Farm. And there's a link to all of this so that you can take a look at um, how that works together. Uh, economics uh, seems to be uh, a deterrent uh, for a lot of people because this is not for free. Yet, I don't think that economics should be deterrent in the development of carbon farming plants. The cost of global warming far will exceed the cost of carbon sequestration. And as an example, for instance, uh, in the United States, we've had uh, several hurricanes, uh, big storms that came in as a result of uh, climate change uh, that did a lot more damage than uh, hurricanes did in the past. They looked at putting up uh, seawalls to protect the land. They did not do that because it was too expensive to install. The damage that was done by these storms far exceeded the cost of the protection it could have had. And I think we have the same situation here, is that we can actually mitigate climate change a lot cheaper by carbon uh, sequestration than the cost of implementing these programs is. And that will be a shift in how we look at our agricultural systems and, uh, and cannot externalize cost anymore. So we also have taken account soil health benefits that come in. We have improved soil structure, better wood penetration, erosion prevent, uh, prevention. We have increased water holding capacity. The whole west of the United States and many parts of India have uh, drought uh, problems. Well, uh, a farm here in Sonoma County um, is using about 25% of the water that his neighboring farms are using with five crop rotations per year grossing $100,000 uh, per acre uh, in uh, crops that not even vineyards can match uh, anything like that. So uh, you can save a lot on water, become more drought resilient through carbon sequestration as well. We have reduced use of fertilizers and pesticides. It is really important that in order to conserve organic matter in the soil, that we go to a no or low till uh, farming practice that of course will save energy and equipment use as well. So here's an example of what uh, they look at at farms when they do a carbon farming plan. They looked at the rangeland uh, that they had, the croplands that they had, shelter belts, hedgerows, et cetera, et cetera. And how, many, uh, uh, how much carbon could be sequestered in the form of CO2 on those different 
ecosystem that existed on the farm. And, uh, and they uh, evaluated out of what it is on an annual basis, as well as over a 20 year uh, period of time. Same is also done on water storage. So uh, how much can it alleviate in making a ranch more drought tolerant uh, when we implement these practices? The carbon farming plants in the United States are implemented by the uh, Resource Conservation District. The Resource Conservation Districts do not have enough uh, staff to keep up with the demand for carbon farming plants at this point. Uh, as was said in the introduction, I also teach at the Santa Rosa Junior College, and I'm contacting them right now to see if we can create a carbon farming plan or certification program so we can actually get more people in the field to develop these carbon farming plants. Another limitation is that there's not enough compost available. And as I said earlier, using uh, a half an inch to a quarter inch of uh, compost is too much. Uh, they went that high to really to show that there will be an effect. But what we really need to look for is the smallest amount of compost that can, we can apply to get the maximum amount of carbon sequestration. That way we can stretch the compost far enough to get more carbon sequestration going in different uh, farming operations. And then there's the economic implementation of the uh, program. Uh, we have carbon offset programs here in the, in the United States. Uh, we have a, in California, the Healthy Soils program that is not focused necessarily on carbon sequestration, but we can easily make that part of it. And there's an innovative idea that is uh, being uh, piloted uh, at this point in Sonoma County is called Zero Footprint, uh, where they are going to put a 1% surcharge on all food consumed in the county. So you go to a restaurant, any restaurant, fast food restaurant, there will be an opt-out, 1% uh, surcharge on that food, and that money will be used to pay farmers to implement a carbon farming plan. Here's a list of resources. You can find out more information on uh, carbon farming. And with that, that completes my presentation and uh, I'm open for uh, questions. Thank you, Will, for the very detailed uh, You're welcome. Uh, I, if anyone has um, any questions, you can directly message it uh, in the chat. Um, Yeah, I see a, um, a chat message here, uh, someone from Texas uh, that uh, would like to, uh, I think the Texas, uh, but my email is uh, on the uh, presentation. Um, I assume that uh, the organization will uh, coordinate with me that I will make that PDF available to you and you can distribute that to the participants. Sure. And then uh, feel free to uh, send me an email. Uh, I'm very responsive to people that email me and uh, love to help you out in collaborating in uh, setting up these programs. Um, it, it does take knowledge, uh, for instance, uh, in our, both for composting and uh, carbon uh, farm planning. Uh, my, I teach uh, composting at the Santa Rosa Junior College. That is a 36-hour um, program. The U.S. Uh, Composting Council also does uh, training programs uh, for uh, commercial composters, uh, mostly based on uh, composting of food scraps and yard debris. Uh, and that is also a five-day program, and I'm a co-teacher uh, for those uh, sessions as well. Um, so it, it does take training um, and um, if I can help out in any way in getting people to pathways of uh, uh, implementing those uh, training programs, uh, I'd love to help out on that level as well. Thank you, Will. Uh, yes, we will be sharing your presentation with uh, all those who have registered. And if okay. anybody wants to get in touch with you, we'll also share the contact details. Uh, what we've also done is added um, your uh, website as well as uh, your, uh, I think, LinkedIn profile on our website. In this okay. So anybody Great. who wants to get in touch with you directly can also do so. I'll also add uh, your email ID. Yeah. Uh, 
So that, because I actually uh, re, uh, came across, we at our organization came, we keep discussing about, uh, you know, cows and climate change. So uh, uh, we do have a question, sorry. Yeah. Uh, how the carbon sequestering reduces global warming? H how does the sequestration of carbon reduce global warming? Uh, yeah, so um, through the process of photosynthesis, uh, the plants use CO2 from the atmosphere to make um, plant material, basically. So it's a very natural biological process. Um, unfortunately, the way our agriculture has been working so far with uh, mechanized agriculture, tilling the soil, we like to have it clean, the surface, no weeds growing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we are actually depleting organic matter in the soil all the time. What we're doing now is um, with photosynthesis, as I said earlier, plants uh, exude about uh, 30 to 40% of the carbon taken from the atmosphere through the roots to feed the microorganisms. That builds up the organic matter content in the soil. Then also the compost, uh, I think we really need to look at that as a catalyst to increase the microbial activity in the soil, to uh, increase the water holding capacity of the uh, soil. And so it helps and, and improve the soil structure so that we can get a larger root ball underneath the plant. So it becomes more effective in taking that carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it in the soil. Now, if we don't till that soil, we'll see indeed that that carbon in the soil will start growing. Uh, the farm that I talked about in Sebastopol uh, in about six years time, they went from an organic matter content in the soil of uh, one to one and a half percent to an organic matter content average of six to eight percent in their soil. So that's an increase of about five percent of organic matter in the soil. Uh, so um, that is a significant amount of carbon that is now being sequestered, that is carbon that used to be in the atmosphere that is no longer in the atmosphere, that is now in the soil and actually not, does nothing else but provide benefits to your agricultural system. There is no drawback to this here. And so um, it's a very natural process where we do. Right now with global warming, the problem is that carbon is in the wrong place. And a lot of it was stored in fossil fuels. Of course, we've done a great job in pumping that into the atmosphere, combine that with depleting the soils of organic matter. So now what we're doing is saying it's like, well, we can increase the organic matter in the soils through a specific management program. And that's what the carbon farming planning is for. And if we can then increase the, uh, on average, because not all soils will actually take to uh, a good increase of organic matter in the soil. It's a lot harder to do in sandy soils than in loamy and clay soils. But if we can get the increase uh, on average uh, the organic matter from, uh, I would say right now we have an average of maybe 1% uh, organic matter in the soil and we can increase that to an average of 5%. Uh, that is a tremendous amount of carbon that we've taken out of the atmosphere and we will actually see that the threat of climate change to mankind, because Earth will go on, on with more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, it is not limited by that it is not suitable for mankind. And so if we want to live on this earth in harmony with the community that uh, we share this earth with, then we have to take a corrective action at this point by taking that CO2 out of the atmosphere. And the best place to put it that has the most benefits to our society is putting it into the soil through this process. I hope that answers the question. Uh, in fact, to be honest, if there is one point that we actually wished to cover through your entire presentation is this one key point, which you did cover in the presentation, you know, uh, to actually highlight the potential that composting has uh, as a climate change mitigation tool. Because whenever we talk about carbon sequestration, we of course think about planting trees, uh, but we felt this is a more direct way uh, where, yeah. you know, the plant, uh, you know, especially in India, um, agriculture is also the backbone. So a lot 
lot of crops that are grown are for food and not all agricultural lands can be converted into forests and we have a you know huge population to feed as well so this sort yeah. of comes at the intersection between a responsible sustainable agriculture which provides food as well as you know uh, uh, fighting climate change in terms of sequestering carbon so for at least the yeah. indian context we, this is a very very powerful idea uh, when we were just going through the global soil organic report uh, by the fao and uh, you know which uh, spoke about how uh, you know carbon is decreasing in the soil and about land degradation and uh, the, the report also highlighted various uh, sustainable land management practices uh, but something that we noticed which was quite sad was there was no mention of uh, you know composting or uh, you know cow yeah. manure or uh, you know these uh, these are also very indigenous practices for example in our country we've been doing this for um, many generations actually uh, you know putting the Uh, cow manure, uh, composting it in in small pits, and then where yeah. it is, because we are mostly smallholder farming uh, farmers. But this practice is done almost at every in every small farm where the manure is taken, composted, and then uh, you know given back to the soil. But yeah. this is where we felt like research and the kind of work that you are doing, uh, you know, will play a huge role. Uh, we felt in terms of uh, realigning the narrative and uh, bringing back these best practices. Uh, Uh, which can benefit, uh, in in fact, the whole of humanity, if I could say. Yeah, no, and I, I think it's very frustrating that uh, this has not become more mainstream. Um, and I think it the the problem uh, resides in the fact that uh, most universities, for instance, are still being uh, funded by corporations, uh, the oil industry, uh, the fertilizer industry, uh, which do not benefit from compost because actually if we use more compost that means that we're going to use less fertilizer we're going to use less uh, pesticides and herbicides uh, so we stand in their way kind of um, and so um, so the incentive is not there there's a discrepancy right now how we train people in what we need and so what I'm trying to do here and that's why I bring in carbon gardening uh, as well and promote that is so that people understand uh, You go to the average person here, and uh, I think there is a sense of hopelessness and despair about climate change, and they feel like they cannot do anything. Well, I provide them now with a tool that they can actually sequester carbon in their own backyard. They now have the power to actually help fight climate change. Now, with that, they then also understand the benefit from it and will start looking for farmers that actually will farm their crops in a sustainable manner that uh, uh, addresses climate change. And when we have elections, now we can make in the elections this year a platform and say, this needs to be addressed and we need to get bills coming through that actually will support and promote the use of compost and mulches. And it has to be in, in a combined effort. It is not just compost and mulch. Um, I think uh, looking at agriculture more in a, a permaculture food forest system, you know, it's like where we, grow crops inter, inter uh, twined with uh, trees, fruit trees, et cetera, et cetera. So we create communities with carbon sequestration in trees as well. Uh, that is the solution. Uh, thank you so much, Will. Uh, if there are no more questions, then uh, we could uh, conclude uh, the session here. Uh, all the Thank best uh, for the amazing work you're doing, and we hope to stay in touch, uh, you know, uh, especially any insights we want on research or uh, this carbon capture technology through composting, we'll definitely write to you. And uh, all the participants are also free to uh, get in touch with Will. Uh, he does respond uh, to emails. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Th thank you so much for inviting me, and all the best to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Um, uh, so uh, this brings us to the end of day one. Uh, thank you all for joining uh, today's session. I, I, I'm just going to take two minutes to quickly tell you what uh, we will be uh, seeing in tomorrow's session. Um, I'm just sharing my uh, the schedule for tomorrow's event. Okay, I don't know why I'm not able to share it. I'm sorry. Okay, I hope you're able to see uh, the schedule. Uh, tomorrow in the morning session, we have, um, uh, yeah.
Yeah, tomorrow we have Dr. Kritika who will be joining us, uh, uh, who is the Dean of uh, an Ayurvedic Institute, who will be talking about the Ayurvedic uses of Go-based formulations. And then we have a panel discussion on uh, from researchers uh, from IIT Bombay will be joining us. Uh, in the evening, we have uh, three very good sessions. Uh, all uh, three of them, uh, two of them are Goshala owners. Uh, one is Sri Gopal Bhai Suttaryaji, who is the uh, founder of Bansigir Goshala uh, in um, uh, Ahmedabad. Uh, he'll be joining us and talking to us about cow derivatives in Ayurveda and agriculture. They've also, they are also into products and a lot of research in this area. And then we have Abhinav Goswamiji from Texas Goshala, who's also uh, with us here today. We'll be talking about the story of setting up a Goshala outside India and how Goshalas can serve as centers for sustainability. Uh, I will also be emailing you uh, tonight the uh, link to their websites. Uh, it's also there on our uh, website. Uh, you can, a link to their website is there, so you can uh, definitely take a look at the amazing work uh, they are doing. We uh, finally have in the evening Dr. Punya Murthy, who will be talking about natural medicines for cows. He will also be talking about how he's worked with multiple goshalas across the country and how they've been able to significantly bring down the costs of treatments of uh, various cows using simple um, uh, uh, remedies. So um, uh, looking forward to uh, meeting you all tomorrow uh, for tomorrow's session. Uh, until then, uh, namaste.